in a quiet village called Mudappalur near Palkat in Kerala Achyutan Nair and his wife Balamba lived as a highly devoted and spiritual couple after years of prayers to the lord in december 1886 a son was born to them in the margasirsha month on the auspicious shukla paksha ekadashi day this day is also marked as the day that the bhagavad gita was born the boy's horoscope was quite unique while it promised a life of huge prosperity and fame there were clear indications of abject poverty the child was named subramanya subramanya was no ordinary child from young he displayed an amazing proficiency in malayalam and then he quickly began to master various hymns and chants when gods and deities were being described he would go into states of extreme concentration and absorption while worshiping in temples he was usually seen with tears in his eyes and horripilation all over his body there were no childish tantrums not even fear things that attract children like tasty food toys the glitter and the gloss held no charm for him instead he would inspire his friends to join him in rituals a simple stone would suffice as a shivalinga there was something else that was unique about this boy he loved going into solitude alone he would revel in prayer for hours together in his teenage years unfortunately his mother had passed away as he entered high school something strange began to happen being inherently intelligent and hard working he excelled in his academics making his father extremely happy but at the same time subramanya was losing all interest in studies the school curriculum seemed irrelevant to him why in his own words this sort of education is as dry as a skeleton what am i going to gain from it i seek no job i want no wealth then what is money for all i need is a morsel of food once a day to keep this body and soul together he reasoned although out of respect for his father he tried to fight his feelings but it was a losing battle at the age of 16 subramanya permanently left school his father was baffled subramanya why did you do this the boy calmly answered don't worry father i've only quit school it doesn't mean that i've put an end to my studies i love the learned books and the noble poems they're most dear to me i will continue my learning i long to study sanskrit too but please please don't hold any hopes about my material life and future he pleaded strangely enough after quitting school his schedule at home became much more rigorous each morning he rose well before dawn the day began with intense meditation on lord shiva after parayanam the chanting of sacred texts he would study the upanishads only then would he have his breakfast his day was filled with education japa and meditation for instance he would recite the entire gita every day from memory but more importantly he would revel in the meaning of every verse as he recited it there was an intense study of the sanskrit language its grammar and literature he filled his heart with the writings of adi shankaracharya sri ramakrishna ramana maharishi swami vivekananda sri ramatirtha 
and the list went on and on. But he made sure that any form of study was accompanied by contemplation, discussion and meditation. He continues in his journal, From young, it was Subramanya's nature to enjoy solitude, and this led him to quiet and serene places. Near his house was a beautiful forest full of trees, flowers, and chirping birds. Every evening, he would retreat into these woods and meditate upon the greatness of God's creation, the isness of it all. Steeped in reflection, he lost all count of time. Like a man who was drunk, he moved about the forest, completely fearless of the dangers that surrounded him. When the insects and the worms began to bother him, he built with his own hands a high wooden platform so he could sit in deep contemplation. Nandish Vaka Piruvara Pate Mahesha Mandagini Salila Tira Krita Jivas Nanda Di Bhakta Nicha Yaira Nu Santapanashana Vibho Tava Suprabhata